I'm Kendall with Lava Lava Creations, and today we're going to be making this adorable little ice cream cone. This pattern is beginner friendly, so I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about crochet from the very beginning. This is a perfect first project. For your supplies, you're going to need medium weight for yarn in pink, tan, and then a dark brown for the sprinkles, and a little bit of black for the smile, as well as 10 millimeter safety eyes and backs, a tapestry needle, stitch marker, scissors, and stuffing, plus a five millimeter crochet hook. At the beginning of this video, you're going to see me talk about the magic ring, which is how we're going to start our crochet piece. I'm going to be showing it in white yarn. It is from my other video for this little ghost. So if I talk about ghost and I'm using white yarn, don't worry, it's the same system. I just liked how I explained it really well in that video. So I thought why repeat myself and make a mistake when I could just use the same footage. So if you hear me talking about a ghost and using white yarn, it's all good. Once I'm past that point, I'll jump back into the specific color so you can work with it with me. All right, we'll top right in. Hello, hello. I'm Kendall with Lovely Little Lemon Creations, and today we're gonna be making this adorable little ghost. If you're coming for one of my beginner crochet kits, you get to make two ghosts, and they're little duos, and they're best friends, and they're super cute. Your kit comes with everything you need, and if you add it on a crochet hook, perfect. If not, you're gonna need a five millimeter crochet hook. The supplies you're gonna need is medium weight for yarn in white, orange, and black, eight millimeter safety eyes and backs, stuffing, stitch markers, a tapestry needle, and scissors. This tutorial is completely beginner friendly. I'm teaching you how to crochet your very first piece. So if you have any questions, drop them down below or reach out to me over email or through my website or anything. Just don't reach out over social media. It's, I don't generally get those messages. List down below, I have the crochet kit and the pattern and let's hop right into the video. So to start our ghost, to do the very top, we're gonna to do something called a magic ring or a magic circle. And then I'm gonna show you an alternative in case that method's a little tricky. I pulled out my yarn, I'm pulling from the middle, and I'm gonna call this my tail. And this is the end that's finished, there's no more yarn attached, it's where the end is. I'm gonna place it in my hand, and I'm gonna wrap around to form an X over my hand, over my palm. I'm gonna hold in the middle so it doesn't come undone. I'm gonna take my hook, and there's a couple different ways to hold your hook. You can hold it like a pencil, or like a knife, or any variation. I prefer a knife, it's exactly like you would use a utensil, and that's just what I'm comfortable with. I'm gonna go under, and then over. And I'm gonna pull this yarn through. I'm kind of twisting my hook up, because then I'm gonna shimmy this off my hand. This is the yarn that's attached to the ball. So I'm gonna take it, and I'm being gentle because I don't want this to completely come undone. And I'm gonna pull that yarn, the working yarn, which is attached to the ball. I'm gonna tighten it so this is a little snug. I'm pinching so it doesn't come undone. And we're gonna do something called a yarn over. A yarn over, I'm gonna place the yarn on top of the hook and pull through. And that's called a chain. And this is our magic circle. Let me show that one more time. Have my tail. I'm gonna wrap around my hand and hold it in the middle. I'm gonna go under and then over and pull this arm through. Just like that. And then I twisted my hook up. Shimmy off my hand, pinch, tighten, and then I'm gonna switch it to my other hand. To do our chain, this is a yarn over, and then pull through. We're now gonna make our actual stitches, which we're gonna call single crochets. And that's just one of the many stitches in crochet. So I'm gonna insert my hook through our circle. Oops. I'm gonna insert my hook through the circle. This is the tail. And I'm going under both. And then I'm gonna make my single crochet 
which is our yarn over. And I'm gonna pull it underneath. Oops, I missed. So my hook's under, yarn over, pull through. So I have two loops on my hook. I'm tightening a little bit with my working yarn. Gonna yarn over again and pull through. And that's one single crochet. For the first round, we have to make six. So that was one. Again, I'm gonna insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through both. So you have two. This will be our third. And our fourth. Five. And six. Now, this is a super fun part about the magic ring. I'm gonna pinch up top by my hook and then I'm going to pull the tail. And now it's actually a circle for our first round. I wanna show you another method in case the magic ring's causing a little bit of issues. So I'm gonna take this out just by pulling it. I'm gonna make a slip knot. So I have my tail over here. I'm gonna take it, twist, and pull through. I'm gonna insert my hook and then tighten. You don't want it too tight that you can't move it, but you don't want it too loose that it falls off. So just like a little snug. We're gonna do two chains, which is our yarn over, pull through, and then our yarn over, pull through. This was chain number two. And this was chain number one, right by our slip knot. I'm gonna insert my hook. I wanna tell you, it doesn't matter if you go under two or under one, just, just put your hook in there. And we're gonna make the six single crochets in there. So yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. So that was one. I'm gonna insert into the same hole, the same chain. And I'm going to make all six of my single crochets. That's three, four, five, and six. This method, you might have a little bit of a hole. That's okay. You can take your tail and your, that little needle in your kit, and you can sew it closed if you need to. I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna do the magic ring just because I don't wanna sew this at the end and it's a little easier for me. And then we'll move on to round two. So we just finished round one and to mark that we're at the end of round one, I'm gonna take my stitch marker, which is that little safety pin, safety pin, clothes pin, safety pin, little looking doodad. So I know it's a little hard to see with the white yarn. I'm gonna place it in my last, last stitch that I made. Each stitch is that little V. So I'm gonna insert into the V, close it up. Now I know where my next round starts and the last round ended. So I'm gonna pull some more yarn so I have some stuff to work with. I like to move my tail out of the way because you don't wanna crochet with that because then you're gonna not have enough yarn. You wanna use the yarn attached to the ball. So I'm gonna work in a spiral. So I'm gonna insert my hook into the next stitch. For round two, we're gonna do six increases. And an increase is just two single crochets next to each other. So I'm gonna insert my hook. I'm going under both of those lines. And now we're gonna make one single crochet. Our yarn over. 
pull through. Yarn over, pull through both loops. To do an increase, because that was just one, we have to make our second single crochet. So I want to insert into the same stitch and make a second. So there's one and there's two and they're right next to each other. So I'm going to turn my piece a little bit and into the next stitch I'm going to do the exact same thing. So one and then two. At the end of round one we had six stitches. At the end of round two you'll have 12. So you're placing two in every stitch. So I'm going to do it again, one, and then two, moving around, and then again, and I just did it five times, but I have to do it six times. So this was my last stitch, I marked with my stitch marker, so I'm going to take them out, do our increase of the two single crochets. And then I'm going to place my stitch marker back in that last stitch that I just made because we're going to move up around. So this will mark the end of round two. And our circle's a little bigger. For round three, if you're looking at the pattern, you're going to see brackets. You're going to see a single crochet, comma, and then an increase. And we're going to repeat that whole sequence in the brackets throughout this round. So first we have to do a single crochet. So in the next stitch, we're going to place one single crochet. Done. And then into the next one, not the same, you want to move to the next stitch. That comma in the brackets means we're moving over. And do our increase which we know is just two single crochets. But they have to be next to each other. They have to be in the same stitch. So the sequence in the brackets is three stitches, one and then an increase. So we're gonna repeat that again, one, and then moving over, an increase. And we're going to repeat that for the rest of the round. So one, then an increase, one, an increase, one, increase, one, I'm going to take out my stitch marker and then an increase. And then I'm going to place my stitch marker back in so I don't lose track. For the next round, it's going to be a little similar. It says two single crochets and then an increase. Two single crochets is different than an increase because the two are going to be across two different stitches. So we're going to do one, move over to the next one, do another one, so they're in two different, and then an increase. So this is sequence with four stitches, one, two, and then an increase. And we'll do that for the round, so one, two, and then an increase, one, two, increase, one, two, increase, one, two, 
to increase one, two, take out the stitch marker and increase. Put the stitch marker back in. Switching over to yellow. So I'm done with the beginning portion that was in white. I'm doing yellow for this example because I thought it'd just be fun, look like a lemon shorebert or something. We just finished round four, which was single crochet two and then an increase. For round five, we're going to do single crochet three and then an increase. So we're gonna do one, two, then three, and then an increase in the next stitch. So again, one, two, three, and then an increase. And you'll complete this for the round. For the next six rounds, rounds six through 11, we're gonna be placing one single crochet in every stitch. So there's no increases. So we're just gonna do one, and then the next stitch, do another one. I know let's do this for a round and a round. One stitch into every stitch. So you're keeping the same stitch count. After you finish round six, you'll move up your stitch marker and you'll do that for a total of six rounds. I'm gonna hop off camera to do this and then we'll come back together for round 12. At the end of round 11, it's starting to look more like ice cream. For round 12, we're going to learn how to do a half double crochet, a slip stitch, and work in the front loop only. Normally when we make our stitches, we go through both of these loops, one, two. But now we're just gonna be going through this front loop. We're gonna repeat our sequence in the brackets around this whole round, but just in the front loop. So it says four half double crochets. To do a half double crochet, you yarn over. We're gonna insert into the front loop. Yarn over, pull through one loop. So you have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all three. We're gonna make a total of four half double crochets all in the same stitch. So yarn over, insert in the same, yarn over, pull through, so you have three, yarn over, pull through all three. That was two, so this is three, If you have a hard time pulling through all three, make sure you're turning your hook down to slide through. That was three, so this is four. Then it says we're gonna skip one stitch and do a slip stitch. So we're still working the front loop. This is our next stitch, so we're gonna skip it. And then the front loop will do a slip stitch. To, the, to do that, you're gonna insert your hook yarn over, pull through, and then pull through again. So this one's smaller than a single crochet. And then we're gonna skip one stitch again and repeat. So I'm gonna skip one and do our four half double crochets. Our three loops, one, Two, three, and four. Skip one and then a slip stitch. 
putting in our hook, yarn over, pull through, and then pull through again, and then skip one. And we'll pre repeat again. So skipping one, and then four half double crochets. Skip one, slip stitch. You're gonna repeat this for the whole round until you get to the very end. At the end, your sequence might be like uneven because you might have two more stitches. You're gonna do a slip stitch in the last two. So let me work around and we'll catch up to the end. All right, I'm almost to the end. So we, this was my last slip stitch. So then we're skipping one. So we have two stitches left. I'm gonna take out my stitch marker and I'm gonna do a slip stitch in those last two. So this is the one I'm skipping, and then we do a slip, and then a slip into the next one as well. We're then going to fasten off. So I'm going to leave a tail. I like mine kind of long so I can use it for sewing. Cut your yarn, and then pull through. And now your piece can't come undone. And we finish the top of our ice cream. To do our ice cream cone, we're gonna start with our magic ring again. I'm not gonna go as slow as I did in the beginning, so please pause this video and then go back to the beginning if you need to um, see the magic ring again. So I'm gonna make my X in my hand with my tan yarn for the cone, hold in the middle, under, over scoop, And then chain one. <laughs> See my cat pop in for a moment. Thank you, Peanut. And then we'll place six single crochets inside our loop. And then I get to pull it. So we have our circle. So for the next two rounds, we're going to place one single crochet in every stitch. It could be a little hard because this is so small, so I'm not going to use a stitch marker, but I'm going to keep track of six in my head just because I don't want the stitch marker getting in the way. So we'll do one single crochet, one, moving on, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm going to push it out so my middle tail is on the inside. And then we're going to do that again. So one, two, three, four, ooh, four. Five and six. Cool. Now I'm gonna put my stitch marker in. Round four, we're gonna do six increases. Increases two single crochets and one. So I'm gonna do one stitch and then into the same hole, I'm gonna do a second. And I'm going to do that for the round so that our six stitches become 12. If your middle tail is starting to get in the way, like mine is, you can trim it. Don't trim it too close because you don't want it to come undone. But that will help. Then I can shove this little tail on the inside. We don't have to worry about it. I'm trying to keep track of where I am. There we go. Remove my stitch marker. Do 
my last increase. See, now you're starting to see it's already looking like a little mini cone. Next two rounds, you're gonna place one single crochet in every stitch. So no increases or anything, just one, 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 one. All the way around, twice. Since I know how you, since I know that you know how to do single crochet rounds, I'm gonna hop off, but do two rounds of 12 stitches. For the next round, we're gonna do one single crochet and then an increase. So here's one single crochet, and then the next stitch and increase. And you'll repeat this for the round. So one, and then an increase. Next two rounds, you might have guessed it, we're going to do one single crochet into every stitch for a total of two rounds. For the next round, we're going to do two single crochets and then an increase. So one, and then two, and then our increase. And you'll repeat this for the round. Instead of single crocheting in the next two rounds, we're actually going to do it for the next four. So place one single crochet in every single stitch for a total of four rounds. Now at the end of my cone, I'm going to leave a long tail for sewing, cut, and fasten off. And now we've finished our cone. To start our assembly, I'm going to start back with our ice cream cone, and we're going to add our eyes. I like to place my eyes in first before I like put the backs on or anything, just so I can see what I'm looking at. Okay, and then I have a piece of black yarn I'm gonna put in my tapestry needle, my yarn needle, whatever you wanna call it. And then starting from the back, I'm gonna poke through where I want one corner of the mouth to be. Now I'm pull through, so there's a few inches in the back, so it doesn't come undone. I'm going to move over about two stitches, create a straight line. And then I'm going to go underneath one row, so it's the bottom arc of the smile. Then I get to scoop down our straight line and add this little anchor point. So we have this super cute smile. But see, that's why I place the eyes first and I'm like, ooh, those are not even. How can we make this cuter? Let's move over this eye. Let me pull out the original. Hmm, maybe I could try a little further apart. Eyes are weird, it takes a minute. Oh yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. I wanna place on my backs, which are these little plasticky parts. On the back, you should put your, your washer on like this, so it's gonna be flush with your piece, and then push hard. Ugh. Sometimes it takes a moment. If whatever reason you can't get the eye on, it is okay to put these on backwards, like this. Just bear in mind, this does not make it as secure. I've never had a problem with it personally, but um, safety eyes should not be used for children under the age of three, so just keep that in mind. It is possible for them to come out, but it's unlikely. Ooh, that was, that was a good sound. <laughs> Cutie. With our smile, take out my tapestry needle, and I'm going to add a square knot. Don't pull too tight, you don't want to mess up your smile. And then I'll trim it so it's out of the way. And this was the top middle part of the ice cream. Well, let's move that out of the way. <laughs> He's looking silly. I'm going to do my sprinkles in orange just because that is what I have in terms of yarn sitting right next to me. So I'm going to cut off a piece and I'll put on my tapestry needle. And then starting on the inside, we're going to embroider some sprinkles. You can poke out anywhere, leave a few inches on the back. 
and then you decide how long or big you want your sprinkles. I like doing about two stitches. <laughs> and then you can put them all around the top, wherever you seem fit. There's no science to this, it is really wherever you want sprinkles to be. It takes a little bit playing around with. You know, make sure your sprinkles are going in different directions and everything good. When you're finished with your sprinkles, make sure you finish off on the inside. And then I'm going to tie these together. Again, do not pull too tight, but you wanna make sure your piece isn't come undone. So you can see there's plenty of room to wiggle, but now it's not going to slip off. Now we have all the details, but we have to sew it to our cone. So I wanna pull my cone back. I'm gonna put the, the cone tail on my tapestry needle. And we're going to sew it to right above the ruffles or the scallops, or whatever you want to call them. You know how we only use the front loop? These are technically the back loops that we left. So now we get to sew it to those back loops. It'll make it easy peasy for us. So I'm going to hold my cone and my ice cream. And I'm going to stitch through that back loop and through the cone. There's about 500 different ways to sew pieces on. I'm here to tell you it really doesn't matter as long as it stays together. Especially because the way this pattern is set up, you're not going to see um, where this is because the scallops kind of like come down. So like, don't be afraid. Um, if it's a little messy, it's totally good. One thing I do want to note here is that when we finished our cone, we only went to two single crochets and then an increase. When our ice cream, we went to three single crochets and then an increase. Obviously this isn't an issue, but when you're sewing, it's not gonna be one for one. So it's not gonna be one back bar, one or back loop to one stitch on the ice cream cone. It's gonna be uneven. So let's keep that in mind as you're working around. You'll have to put two into one and that sort of thing. I'm gonna sew three quarters of the way around, and then we'll talk about stuffing. I'm about three quarters of the way around, not exactly. I wanna grab my stuffing. Whoa. You do not just wanna shove this whole thing in. You wanna pull it apart into small clumps and place it individually. And for our ice cream cone, you'll have to place some in the bottom and the top portion of the ice cream. So I'm just separating it into small clumps I'm placing it where I want. This will give us a nice full look and it doesn't use as much stuffing, which is really nice. I want to make sure the bottom of my cone looks pointy, so I'm going to add a little bit of extra stuffing down there. And I want to finish off my cone. Yeah, there we go. A little bit more. Hi, there's my second cat. <laughs> He's helping me do all the stuffing. Hi, Cashew. He says, why isn't this about me? And then if you hear Peanut, she's upset it's not about her too. But we're almost done. Then they'll get all the cuddles in the world. I'm gonna add a little bit more to the top. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. I like that. You don't generally wanna overstuff unless you really want that like bursting look. I personally don't enjoy it, but it's your ice cream, you do what you want. I'm going to finish sewing all the way around and then I'll show you how to hide your yarn tails. So I'm at the very end and you don't just wanna cut off your yarn because obviously it will come apart. So what you actually wanna do is poke it through as close as you can to like where it's coming out now. So I poke it right next to it. And then I'm gonna stick it anywhere that's tan. And then I'm going to cut the yarn. And I'm kind of rubbing it to make sure it goes back in. We'll repeat the same thing with the yellow. So I'm going to put the tail on my needle. I want to get close to where I am right now. I'm going to add extra stitch just so it's a little 
little rounder. There's no science behind it. And then stick it into the yellow and poke out anywhere that's yellow. And then you can trim. And now we have our ice cream. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you loved making this adorable beginner friendly ice cream cone and crochet. If you did enjoy it, please like this video and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel so that I can continue to make more videos for you. You should also stay up to date with me on TikTok if you want to hear about new releases, new kits, new patterns, and everything that goes on behind the scenes of my business. Thanks so much for watching. Again, my name is Kendall, and I'll see you in the next video.